It was invented by Japanese anglers and made popular by American professional bass anglers, but it's not just for bassing anymore. We're talking all things drop shotting on this episode of Fishful Thinker, the podcast. I'm Chad Lachance, and you're listening to Fishful Thinker, the podcast. All things fishful, all the time. Hey guys, Chad Lachance here. Thanks so much for tuning in. I always appreciate that you do. It's a labor of love around here. Um, We're all about educating, and uh, this one's going to be an educational one. Real quick, I'll throw out there, we would really appreciate it if you would check out our YouTube channel at Fishful Thinker and also Facebook and Instagram. Uh, We uh, put a lot of effort, particularly into the YouTube channel these days. And, uh, of course, you can catch us on Altitude Sports and Entertainment or World Fishing Network, either one, like five days a week on network television, and we stream all over as well. So I want a quick plug for that stuff. Sorry about that, but uh, but like I said, we do want you guys to check out more than just our podcast. So with that, let's get back to the topic at hand, and that is drop shotting. Uh, We're getting to the time of year where, as a bass angler, uh, drop shotting is a major thing, particularly as a smallmouth bass angler, but... I don't want you to listen to this podcast and right away think that this is only for bass fishing because the drop shot as a technique or as a rig and a technique in general is far more diverse than uh, than what a lot of people would give it credit for in terms of what it um, its ability to catch and it really just depends on where you throw it and uh, yeah the the pro bass guys made it very very famous um, you know maybe 10 12 years ago 15 years ago. Uh, on particularly smallmouth lakes, but uh, but it's for sure expanded from there. And uh, we're going to talk about a, a bunch of the different nuances of it. We will start with the core stuff, though, because I just spent a bunch of time rigging drop shots up for a guide trip tomorrow, and we'll I have a couple of clients. We'll be for sure looking for some offshore fish, and we will uh, we will be having some drop shots uh, to drop on those fish. And the the fundamental thing of a drop shot is only this. The sinker is on the very bottom of your rig and then tied directly to the line somewhere up from that sinker uh, is your hook and then from there up to your you know rod reel and all that. So that's the fundamentals of it. So the big the big thing is that because the sinker's on the bottom it keeps your bait a measured distance off of the bottom. Okay so what I mean by that is I can make that leader, let's call it a leader, between the hook and the sinker or tag end, whatever you want to call it. I can make that however long I want within reason, and therefore I can have perfect depth control because I can set the sinker on the bottom, and I know that my bait is 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, whatever I set it at, uh, up and off the bottom. And I can make that bait stay right there by keeping a little bit of tension on the line, or I can let let some tension off the line, let the bait settle a little bit and and be very lifelike. Um, Or I can literally move the whole bait up and down if I want, lifting the sinker up and down off the bottom. So the, the premise that the sinker is separated from the typically soft plastic that is put on there is a, is the, the main deal with the whole thing. And a couple of key things about it and why it's so important for me in my fishing as a guide, because I guide for bass and walleyes and some trophy trout on a reservoir that is all rock and it is extremely snaggy. So as a guide, when I've got Joe Average Angler in the boat who may or may not have perfect depth control, probably is not used to my tackle, um, you know, he's got a lot of things going on and snagging is a major issue. Uh, there's, it's pretty common for me to go through 20 or 25 jigs a day. Uh, with two anglers in the boat, it's pretty easy actually to do that. Uh, with two anglers in the boat, you know, you fish for six hours, and and by the end of the day, they've lost two an hour, and and just like that, you're in the 25, 25 uh, lost jigs range, and that gets expensive, especially these days. I'm not a fan of that. So I started years ago adapting to drop shotting more and more and expanding its range because I only lose the sinker, I don't lose the hook, and I don't lose the bait. So if i am got a tube jig or my beloved gulp minnow on a jig head or any sort of a, you know, a jig worm or a, you know, anything like that, uh, a shaky head, I go through tons and tons and tons of, of jigs and baits. And if I go to a drop shot, and I'll, I'll give you a modification for these, all I do is go through the weights at the very bottom of the line, and I don't break stuff off. I'm not having to retie nearly so often, and so it works out really good um, from the drop shot from the financial standpoint, if nothing else. 
And because I'm in control of the leader, the, the length of line between the sinker and the hook, I can almost make a jig out of it. I can make that little tag in that the sinker's hooked to be an inch long if I want, where this the, the, my bait is literally right barely off the bottom, or I can make it five feet long and keep my bait way up off the bottom, but I can make it jig-like by shortening that leader up a whole bunch and getting my bait very, very tight to the bottom. I'll tell you right off, there's not a lot of scenarios where I have it that short. Most of the time, it's going to be, say, four inches or up from there. Um, and it's typically going to max out around the two feet mark. Just That's just how it's worked out for me. It's rare that I'm going to drop shot if my fish are you know, three, four, five feet off the bottom. If they're that far off the bottom, I can probably catch them with something else in most scenarios. Uh, I'm not saying I won't, but I'm not going to try to pin the bait to the bottom. I might be lifting the drop shot into them and just use the weight of the sinker for my depth control uh, up off the bottom. So that's that. That's a, a very simple way to control it. But the, the premise for me with the drop shot is most commonly, um, let's start with the basics for a smallmouth bass or trout or stuff like that. I do it with a medium light power rod, occasionally a medium. Uh, if, if it's windy out, if it's if I need a big drop shot uh, because the fish are maybe exceptionally deep, or I really want the bait to stay to the bottom, and I need a you know a, a half ounce drop shot sinker or a quarter ounce drop shot sinker, I might move up to a medium powered rod. But most of the time, it's going to be on a six foot ten medium light powered. Um, extra fast or fast action rod of some sort. My personal drop shot setup that I'm going to hold and fish every day is a Fantasista X. It's an Abu Garcia Fantasista X, 6 foot 10, medium light, as I just said. Uh, I, I put one of my best reels, the MG Extreme, is on there, and then it's going to have 8 or 10 pound X9, Berkeley X9 braid on it. That's my standard drop shot setup. Uh, for day in and day out, and I, I do all kinds of stuff with that rod. Uh, that's also my gold minnow rod, only typically in my gold minnow rod, it's got fluorocarbon instead of raid um, on it. But it's the same setup that I would use for drop shotting as I would for finesse jigging, which is handy if you only want to use one rod. Uh, typically from there, it's going to have an 8-pound Trident 100% fluorocarbon leader on it. I'm going to join it with a uni knot, um, and then I'm going to make that leader 5 or 6 feet long, and then I'll put my hook down within about 2.5 feet of the bottom with a Palomar knot, and there's a couple nuances to that I'll get back to in a second, but you Palomar knot with the hook, bring the tag end around, back through the eye of the hook from the top so that the hook point faces up, and then the, the tag end goes down to the bottom. From there, I will tie an overhand knot at the very bottom, within about an inch of the bottom, just a plain overhand knot in that fluorocarbon line. And what that does is gives me a little bit of a sinker stop right there. And then these days, I've gotten to where I'm not even using drop shot weights anymore, at least here on my home lake where I, I go through so many weights. All I do, and it saves a ton of money and a ton of headache, is just use split shot. And... Some of bass purists are freaking out right now. What do you mean you're not using a tungsten drop shot weight? Well, it would cost me a lot of money to go through tungsten drop shot weights all day here on my lake, and I don't see a clear enough advantage, on the, at least on water I know. Now, if I'm looking for a hard bottom somewhere in a lake I don't know anything about, uh, yeah, maybe tungsten don't give me the density I need um, to be able to feel that a little bit better, and the drop shot sinkers, you know, you can clip them on quick. You don't have to pinch them on uh, like you do with with a um, uh, split shot, but... I don't need to know where the hard spots are in my home lake because the whole lake is hard spots. So uh, I know wherever I land on the bottom, for the most part, it's in hard hard bottom because you definitely won't have the same feel with the split shot, but it will not slow your catching down a whole bunch. I can promise you that. That's how I've been doing it for clients for a while. Got used to doing it for, for years now, and, um, and it does not mess your rig up at all. And then even a better trick is to put one sinker at the very bottom of your one of your split shot at the bottom, use smaller ones. Instead of one big one, use a couple small ones. Let's say I need a quarter ounce of total weight. Well, then I'll put an eighth ounce one at the very bottom and another eighth ounce one about six inches above it or four inches above it between there and the hook. And at that point, you're not going to lose um, as many split shot either because you're only going to lose them one at a time. Uh, and so that works out exceptionally well. Uh, especially if you're going to do any dragging with that drop shot as opposed to pure vertical, uh, which is the other the other MO with drop shotting. Of course, it's pure vertical, which is what it's most commonly associated with, which is straight down under your boat. But 
a lot of times I'll sit on a hump and I'll have a client's pitch off to one side of the hump and drag the drop shot up the hump. And uh, that's worked very, very well for me in a lot of places. We were filming on Lake Mille Lacs, uh, Minnesota last year. That's how I caught all the biggest ones was dragging the drop shot up the side of the hump. And uh, it works very, very good. But, um, but that basic setup is how I generally do it. Um, the drop shot hook itself is a Fusion 19 drop shot hook. Typically, I'm going to use... Uh, somewhere around a number one to a two aught, somewhere in that range. And some of my favorite baits for the classic drop shot for smallmouth bass, which we're using for our baseline, uh, is going to start off with either a three inch gulp minnow, a gulp leech, a flat nose, a ma- powder bait maxent flat nose minnow, or that same maxent only in the flat worm, which has gone on to become a, a, an absolutely stellar performer around the whole country. Uh, that's a fantastic bait on there. A four inch power worm can be really good on there. A four inch the general, which is a soft stick worm, can be excellent on there as well. Um, additionally, that one will give you a little bit of extra weight. So if you're in really snaggy cover, uh, maybe lighten your sinker up a little bit and put the weight, put add some of the weight from the stick, the stinkworm itself, or the um, the uh, the general, I should say, the stickworm. That bait is heavy in and of itself, and it will add enough weight to help your bait sink uh, down going that rate too. But at any rate, that's my general setup on it. And then most of the time, I'll drop to the bottom. I'll pick up just enough to where I can feel that the sinker's on the bottom, and less is more. The less I shake it, the less I pull it around, in most cases, as far as shaking it or twitching it or anything like that, uh, or jigging it or anything like that, uh, I get fewer bites when I do that. Less is more with the drop shot because unless it's completely glass calm, you can't even hold the boat still enough to keep that thing from wiggling. And there's certainly currents going on down on the bottom. And if a fish gets anywhere near your bait, I've watched them on videos, they just, the bait will not hold still. The fish is paddling right there around it with his pectoral fins and that in itself will move your bait around. So it's almost impossible to hold the bait completely still and it's very easy to overwork the bait. So when in doubt, um, less motion is more when it comes to the drop shot. Now, if I'm gonna drag it, I'm typically gonna drag it smoothly. If I wanna snap something around, I'll get a jig out and I'll snap jig. Or you know, if I wanna do a stop and go or something like that. The drop shot is for maintaining perfect control and dragging it around and only losing baby little sinkers if, that's, uh, if you lose anything at all. So that's really the strength of, of where it's at. Let's say though um, that we want to diversify. We already we already established that that's where the drop shot became famous was drop shotting for smallmouths. Let's say we want to diversify. Let's say we're largemouth fishing. A kid that I mentored for a very long time almost won a big bass tournament uh, with like 350 boats in it on Sam Rayburn in Texas by drop shotting for largemouth under sunken bridge pilings. And those everyone's fishing those sunken bridges. They know they're there. It's no secret spot. But their fish, no one's fishing them with a drop shot, and the fish get really tuned in to what's going on uh, with the other baits. So they made drop shots with like seven inch worms on them uh, with a Texas rig on it to keep it from snagging Rayburn's vegetation. Uh, so the, the bait is Texas rigged instead of nose hooked on the hook, and then a big heavy sinker on it, dropping those bridge pilings and the bridges around the bridges themselves and drop offs and holding the drop shot and not moving the bait. And that big worm's a little bit up off the bottom. And lo and behold, it was a big bass tournament too. I want to point that out. They didn't have to catch five. They had to catch one big one each. And I believe they finished third as a boat by catching two big ones, one big one each with that technique. Aaron Martin's rest his soul, uh, same thing out in the California Delta, used a drop shot, a real short drop shot with a big old worm on it around cattails of all the crazy things. Not a thing that people think of for drop shotting but it works very well. He just upsized the line and everything else that would be more appropriate as if you were throwing a regular Texas rig around there, only now you have a drop shot. You might have that same three or four out hook. Um, You just have the sinker below it and the worm's just positioned a little bit up off the bottom. And obviously it's done with heavier line. That's a great call. Here on my own neck of the woods, not my home lake, but another lake here in my own neck of the woods has got a bunch of very shallow docks that get a tremendous amount of fishing pressure. I've converted to drop shots for those a lot of the time when they're when I'm not getting bites, and I'll put something like a, a soft stick worm like I talked about on it or a big old power worm on it or even a creature bait. 
and, and again, it's Texas rig because there's weeds that grow, weeds, weeds grow all around those docks except for right under them, and I think that's why the fish like them so much. But if you have an open nose hook bait, you'll snag the weeds constantly. So if you Texas rig your worm on uh, either an EW, EWG, which is my preference for that, an extra wide gap worm hook, or a straight shank worm hook, either one, whatever your preference is, if you Texas rig your bait onto that and then you have a drop shot that's six inches you know, below it, the sinker six inches below it, and you've got a heavier line, I can pitch that anywhere I'd pitch any other Texas rig, and I can get it back. And, uh, and but conversely, my, my presentation is totally different than everybody else that is throwing a Texas rig or a jigging pig. So again, a scenario, you just have to upsize the drop shot weight and the tackle that you're doing, or upsize the, the tackle in general, the line, the weight, the, the hook, the whole nine yards, but it's the same concept. It's the depth control and the different look and the fact that your bait behaves more naturally because it's away from the sinker. If you Texas rig, even without pegging the sinker, uh, when you drag the bait, it's going to pull, the, of course, the, the soft plastic right down to the sinker and it's pinned to the bottom. The drop shot, no matter how you drag it, your bait can, can move around a little bit more naturally and, uh, and that can be a really good call. Another scenario that people don't think about for drop shotting is walleyes. Walleyes like a very static presentation. They've, there's a lot of times that walleyes want something very finessey, very static, and not moving. And a drop shot's a great way to do that. And you can even do it with live bait. You could take a live leech, put it on a drop shot, and drop it on fish on, that are sitting on offshore structure and catch the crap out of them doing it. And, uh, and it works very good. And again, your bait is separated from your sinker. <coughs> excuse me, on that same trip to Mille Lacs that I mentioned earlier where I caught my biggest smallies by dragging that thing up the sides of, of the, the structure we were sitting on, we went out a little deeper looking just to see if we could find some more bass, found some fish sitting tight to the bottom, dropped the drop shot on them, and the, small, or the walleyes ate them no problem with the same exact rig that we were throwing for smallmouth with that flatworm on it, with that Maxent flatworm on it. So it's a definitely a known deal that walleyes will bite it, but I don't hear of walleye guys doing it hardly at all. And uh, in fact, I don't know that I've ever heard of a walleye guy doing it and uh, intentionally, other than guys that I associate with directly. That that you know we've all kind of learned it together. So um, it can be a really really good way to mix up presentation when you're fishing around other people, as uh, you know, as far as that goes too. And ironically, we also on my home lake and my own guiding, we run into walleyes on a somewhat regular basis while we're drop shining for smallmouth, and that that can be excellent. Uh, because you, you're, again, we are big fans here at Fishful Thinker of fishing multi-species baits and presentations whenever you're fishing around multi-species fish, which most Western reservoirs are, because you're in the hunt for all sorts of things that way. And that's the way to have the most fun. Uh, just because there's, I might want to catch smallies, it doesn't mean I want to exclude my ability to catch everything else. So if I can catch them well with a bait that's multi-species, I'm going to do it. And there's, that's where I've learned to expand presentations, including the drop shot, into fish well outside of where they were originally built for. Um, another one, and this one's really not going to come as a surprise to some people. Some people are going to be really surprised. But lake trout sitting right on the bottom, everyone drops a big heavy tube jig on them. And, you know, right to the bottom, I get it. But a bait that's sitting six inches off the bottom, right in their face level, they don't have to pick it up out of the dirt, can be another really good one. In that case, a big a big bait. Uh, if I'm going to drop shot something like that, it's going to be a like a five-inch gulp jerk shad or a power jerk shad, maybe even bigger than that because I'm looking for big fish. It'll have a heavy sinker as well, so it'll sit right on the bottom. I do it with the same rod I'm going to jig, you know, with a, with a heavy tube jig with, only I can drop shot it. And the sinker underneath the bait and your baits look a little bit more lively that way that has worked well and also for eater size um, uh, lake trout where you're talking about fish that are in the say 16 to 22 inch class that are being culled from some lakes around here uh, those are for sure susceptible to a drop shot and you may find those fish up suspended off the bottom and they're very easy to catch with the drop shot when they're doing that very easy at that point you can drop a three inch gold minnow on them and catch them no sweat with the with the on a drop shot rig and again you don't lose baits if you do get into the rocks and your bait is separated from your sinker so it's a great looking presentation all the way around uh, another one, very, very important for me to bring up, even though I despise doing it. I am not an ice fisherman. I, 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 don't, I didn't grow up around ice. I grew up in South Florida. Ice is for keeping your catch cold, maybe your cocktails when you get back to the house. 
Um, not a fan of ice fishing. I'm not real comfortable on the ice, blah, blah, blah. Having said that, I'm open-minded enough to go do enough of it to understand it and maybe learn some things from it. And what I found out there right away is a drop shot's a very easy way to catch trout through the ice. Um, very easy way to catch trout through the, right, through the ice. And actually, if it's legal, we've done in a couple spots where there's a tube jig on the bottom and then a gulp minnow that's a foot up the line. And the tube jig that's on the bottom acts as your drop shot weight and now you have a double rig two different presentations two different baits on there and that works well and in a lot of cases you can catch two fish at a time because once you hook one if you don't get in a hurry to bring him up one of his buddies will grab the other bait and you can end up catching them two at a time that way again if it's legal that's not legal in all states it is in colorado where i'm based uh, i can have up to three hooks uh, so I could do that multiple ways. I want to point out that on my home lake, I've done that same thing where you put a tube jig uh, or, or a cre- or craw bait of some sort on the bottom and then a minnow bait above it. It works well, but I end up snagging so many of the bottom baits that, it, that, it, that it's not something I, I focus on doing these days. If I was fishing less snaggy areas, I would probably go ahead and do that because, again, I double my chances. And whenever you get around schools of smallmouth, that's a really good way uh, to catch couples at a time. Uh, and, and, you know, they can be work really good. The problem is you can also get broke off that way because two big smallies, now you're fighting at the same time. And they'll either break your rig itself or break, uh, when, you know, when they're fighting with each other. Or you'll break your main line because you're trying to fight two fish at once. So that's important to keep in mind. If you're going to use two baits, you might consider using the 10 pound and the eight pound leader or maybe even the 10 pound leader if you're going to do that but uh, more often than not i choose to focus on one bait at a time unless maybe the ice fishing scenario um you know as far as that goes another that really good that people don't think about for the drop shotting is crappies around docks or around cover everyone fishes vertical and likes to quote unquote dab crappies but dabbing the, the drop shot, as opposed to the weight being right on your bait right there, you can again separate your sinker and get a more realistic presentation. So that works, works really good uh, for crappies as well, or even bluegills. And uh, bluegills with a little tiny, maybe a one-inch gulp minnow on it, with a little tiny hook, and, uh, and nose hook that minnow with a, like a salmon egg style hook, and, uh, and then your sinker on the bottom. Very good way to catch bluegills. And, and something that is, I think, underestimated and underutilized. Another scenario, uh, spawning bass. Uh, you get smallmouth or largemouth on beds, you, it's a pretty, pretty good way to catch them as well if you do that. I'm not a big fan of bed fishing. I think any fish that will sit there and let you make a lot, a lot, a lot of presentations to them, uh, as opposed to having to catch him blind, is the, the luster wears off for me. I get it. Some of them can be hard to catch. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying I have an ethical issue. Just the fun goes out of it for me when the fish will just sit there and let me keep throwing at them. It's, I'd almost rather do it with no hooks just to see if I can get them to bite and not worry about snatching them off the bed and putting them back, even though I'm fully aware that it's been studied and researched and is done around the country, blah, blah, blah. I'm not preaching. I'm just telling you it's my personal preference. So... All of those scenarios are very good with the drop shot. I will say a couple quick things about it. You noticed all the baits I mentioned are all heavily scented, uh, either power bait or gulp. I'm a big fan of that for drop shotting, if at all possible. I have tried other things like putting flies on drop shots. That works really good. You can do that, Um, you know, things like that. But I'm a big fan of having something that's heavily flavored or scented with the drop shot because a fish is going to get all kinds of time to look at it. They're going to swim up and look at it. They're going to get all kinds of time to decide if they want it. So anything that puts them over the edge and gets them to bite is really important uh, for me. And that helps me get more bites. I'm very convinced of that, having drop shot it with unscented baits at other times just to see. That's a, that's one scenario where I believe, even with sight feeders, that gulp is going to get you more bites. Normally, what I tell you is you'll detect more bites with gulp because the fish will hold it for so long, uh, which is the main reason I fish it, because uh, I, I, you have more time to get a good hook set if you have gulp on your, on your stuff. However, with the drop shot, it will actually get you more bites as well. Hook setting with, with drop shot is not a big deal. Let's talk about that a little bit. 
in most scenarios, your hook is exposed, so you can literally just lift into the fish. It doesn't take a lot, and one of the best parts of drop shotting is that all of your fish are going to be hooked somewhere right around the top of the mouth. It's very rare to deep hook a fish with a drop shot. And that's another reason I do so much of it with clients that maybe don't fish as much as I do because a lot of times with a jig, they're late on the hook set. They didn't detect the bite quick enough. And because it's gold per power bait, the fish is like, hey, I like this. He's going to swallow it, which is great, except for that you deep hook a bunch of fish. So I, as soon as I get somebody that's, that's delaying on hook sets, I'll switch them to a drop shot immediately. And that way I'm not beating up on my fish. And they get a lot more fish that are just hooked right in the corner of the mouth or right in the tip of the snout, depending on how deep you're fishing them. Uh, so that's that's a, another excellent call. But the big thing is just lift into the fish, make sure you get tension on them, and then wind down and go. You don't have to have a big giant hook set with an open hook drop shot. It's probably the most subtle hook set of anything we do. And it's not very far from even being a circle hook type deal where you literally just wind into the fish. With those little tiny Fusion 19 hooks, they're sharp, sharp, sharp. The tip's exposed. Uh, it's very easy to get that thing buried. Now, if you're if you do go the Texas rig route, like around a dock or something like that, where you've got the bait actually, your soft plastic actually Texas rigged on that hook, and then the sinker below it to make it into a drop shot, that that scenario right there, you do need a little bit more of a hook set, a more robust hook set, and uh, because you've got to be able to pull the plastic you know, off of the hook and get that fish buried. So you need to be a little bit more ambitious with your hook set. But in any other scenario, even the lake trout, you can just lift hard into them. Their own weight will because the hook's exposed, their own weight will will help set that hook. As soon as they pull back, that thing's buried, and they're such heavy, big fish, you know? And so that works really good. So you don't have to have a big, giant hook set. Just wind into them, stay tight, and don't get in a hurry because the thing about a drop shot is typically on a light line deal, and you've got a small hook, so don't get in a hurry with it. Enjoy enjoy fighting the fish, and uh, and... You know, I think you'll do just fine with it. The last thing I'll throw out there is this. If you're teaching your kid or your wife or a new angler to, to jig fish, teach them with a drop shot first and then let them convert over to the jig because they can learn the feel of what the jig feels like on the bottom with the drop shot and only go through split shot sinkers instead of going through jigs one after the other. So if I have a total noob that doesn't know how to finesse jig at all, they never worked a tube jig around or never worked a little three inch gold minnow around, the first thing I'll do is put them on a very short drop shot rig and get them going with that thing to get a feel for what it's like when the bait hits the bottom, when the line goes slack, when, you know, how much slack do I want versus not want. I have them fish it just like a jig, but it's a drop shot, and it'll frustrate themselves a lot less because all you have to do is pinch another sink around and throw it right back out again, um, and, and they're right back to fishing. You, it's very rare that you're going to break stuff off from there. So, um, like I said, all scenarios for me, it's a braid to fluorocarbon. There's no drop shot scenario where I don't. The one thing about a drop shot is it will twist your line if, when you're retrieving it up. If you're not careful, you need to maintain slack, but braided line is far uh, less resistance to twist and therefore won't cause you near as many problems. So a thin braided line, like I said, I like X9 for that, um, but whatever kind of braid you like, I like the X9 because it's very, very supple, holds knots great, very smooth to fish with. So. There you have it, drop shotting 101, 102, and 103. It's not just for bass anymore. I think if you keep an open mind with how you rig them and where you throw them, you'd be surprised how effective you can be with a drop shot for a bunch of species. And I recommend you do it. It's cheap and easy and fun way to fish. So, again, appreciate it very much, guys. If you'd uh, check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube channel at Fishful Thinker across all of those, we try to keep busy with those as much as we can and uh, and try to keep it all educational all the time. So with that, I'm signing off. This has been Fishful Thinker, the podcast.